All right, well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Got quiet all of a sudden. Everybody's probably in their own mind now, thinking about the testimony that they've got prepared and ready to come up and give it, <laughs> hopefully. Um, it's just uh, an absolute blessing and an honor to be here. Uh, welcome to the Spokane Dream Center Sunday School. My name is Josh Maltzberger, and I'm just absolutely thrilled to be here, thrilled to have that sunshine out there this morning and be driving to work with my, or to work, it's kind of work, you know, but it's, it's home here, driving here this morning with Samuel and, and praying and singing and praising God and then come in here and get to see all of your shining faces, the light of Christ, you know, beaming forth out of you, uh, changed lives, lives full of joy, full of love and, uh, and testimonies, just going around this morning and getting a feel for how everybody's doing and, and hearing just these good things, you know, life-giving you know, uh, truth coming out of your mouths is such a such a blessing. Um, the, we've been giving our testimonies away last week. Today will be week two of testimonies. So uh, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time up here, but uh, I, do, I do feel led to, to read this um, psalm. And if you've been here before for testimonies, I can't remember if it was last time or the time before we did it, but... The Lord really, you know, I was at, I was just at this psalm, and it speaks so vibrantly, specifically to us about the power of our testimony, and that we should be giving it away. And so that's what I'm going to read this morning, and, uh, and then I'm going to get out of the way and encourage you all to come up and, and edify and build up the rest of the body of Christ here through uh, the wonderful works that God has, you know, brought about in your life. So... Let's pray, and I'll read this word, and then I'll get out of the way. Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful for this morning. I just pray, God, that uh, the light of Christ, Lord, uh, would continue, God, to draw us into your presence where there is fullness of joy, and the joy of the Lord, God, is so blessed in our lives, God, just that in this world that we look around and we see the news and we have loved ones and family members and co-workers and struggling with so many things. Lord, as we once did, God, and there's so much darkness, so much corruption, so much wickedness, but yet, God, you are still on the throne. And you live and you reside in your people. And God, you bring about great change, miraculous change in people, yet even still today, God, and that we can all bear witness, Lord, if we're in Christ, we were once blind, but now we see. We were once dead in our transgressions, but made alive together in Christ. And so we have a testimony. And so I just thank you for each and every person here this morning. I pray, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would help us to eliminate distractions, Lord. Help us to overcome fear and trepidation, Lord. Give us, as your word says, a a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And God, I pray that through the reading of this word, your people would be encouraged, God, uh, by the testimony that you've given us to give it away, Lord, to, to, to learn to do that here and to continue to do that throughout the remainder of their life, God, that we have a testimony each and every day. And I just pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I've got, you know, a testimony, just a quick, uh, just a quick testimony and, I, and an example of how a testimony just opens a door. You know, we have, we had our rent go up. Most of you know this through my son. He gave this testimony at, at prayer the other night, but we had a, a situation where our rent was going up again. We were, you know, looking at signing another, you know, year long lease and it went up another hundred bucks a month and we were and we just prayed and we just God, what would you have us do? We know you'll provide. Do we need but we want to be good stewards? Do we need to move somewhere else into a new place? Would you have us stay? And we just prayed. You know, and so those are the themes going on in my mind. But then out of, you know, kind of left field, God brings his plan in. He just he sees your heart. He knows that you're seeking him. He knows that you are willing to be obedient to whatever he says, and then he brings in his plan, whatever that looks like. And so we have an opportunity now to buy a home for our family, which we were not even in a situation to do. It's really a miracle, and I'm not going to go into all of the details. But that's our testimony. That's what's happening right now in our lives, in, in my family's life. So we were at the Home Depot, you know, the hardware store that I used to hate. 
but uh, but I go to I go to the Home Depot, um, and we're looking at carpet. And so uh, you know, a, an elderly guy who's working there comes up, and you know, again, because of what God is doing, you know, he sees our family. He's, he says, "Well, you know, congratulations on buying a house." But see, I could have just left it there. But I just opened up. I said, yeah, well, this was the situation. We were looking at, you know, really struggling just to pay our rent. And then our rent went up some more. And we were praying about what to do. And then God brought this opportunity out of nowhere. And you could just see it in his face. He just went from, you know, having a regular work conversation to thinking, to going, wow, what is this family talking about? Talking about God, talking about speaking to God, hearing from God, God pr- providing for this, for this family. I mean, it's just something small. But if, if God is included in your everyday life, your everyday decisions, then you have an everyday testimony to give to somebody about the authenticity, the reality of your walk with God, the living God who still protects, still provides, still delivers, still sets free. He's still doing it in people. And our world around us, the world around us, is always needed to hear that, but they still need to hear it. We have the answer in Christ. Okay, that's my testimony of what's going on with us. But I just want to read this. If you want to read along, you can. If you want to write it down somewhere, if you ever come to a place where you're not sure about what's the importance of testimonies, you know, why do we do this? Why why, why do we do this so often here? here? Is there a scriptural basis for this? Absolutely. Hallelujah. Okay, so I'm going to read this psalm, and I want to teach on it, but I'm just going to read it. I want, to, I want the Holy Spirit to minister to you, and then, and then I'll get out of the way. Psalm 107, verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy and loving kindness endure forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Who are you? Are you the redeemed? Amen, right? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has delivered from the hand of the adversary. Have you once been bound in sin, owned by the enemy, owned by the devil, and yet you've been set free? You're now in Christ. You're in his kingdom. You're a son or daughter of the Most High God. Jesus is your Messiah. Then you have been set free He's saying, the psalmist is saying, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You know so, say so. There's a difference, you know, right? I'm encouraging you this morning. The psalmist is encouraging us, say so, speak it, speak it out. Okay. And gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the Red Sea in the south. We've come from all different walks of life. I came from the other side of the mountains. You might have came from Montana. You might have came from Canada. You might have came from Florida. I don't know. People come from all over the place to this place to go into the discipleship program, to be a part of this body. People come from all over the place to Christ. People came from all over the place to come hear what he had to say. That's what God is doing. It's his desire that none should perish. Some wandered in the wilderness in a solitary desert track. They found no city for habitation. Hungry and thirsty, they fainted. Their lives were near to being extinguished. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. He led them forth by the straight and right way, that they might go to a city where they could establish their homes. Oh, that men would praise and confess to the Lord for his goodness and loving kindness and his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with good. Some sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and in irons, because they had rebelled against the words of God and spurned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore, he bowed down their hearts with hard labor. They stumbled and fell down, and there was none to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and broke apart the bonds that held them. Oh, that men would praise and confess to the Lord for his goodness and loving kindness and his wonderful works to the children of men. For he has broken the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron apart. Some are fools, or they're actually made ill because of the way of their transgressions and are afflicted because of their iniquities. 
They loathe every kind of food, and they draw near to the gates of death. Then they cry to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivers them out of their distresses. He sends forth his word and heals them and rescues them from the pit and destruction. Oh, that men would praise and confess to the Lord for his goodness and loving kindness and his wonderful works to the children of men. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and rehearse his deeds with shouts of joy and singing. Hallelujah! It's okay to shout to the Lord, sing his praises. Some go down to the sea and travel over it in ships to do business in great waters. These see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commands and raises up the stormy wind, which lifts up the waves of the sea. Those aboard mount up to the heavens. They go down again to the deeps. Their courage melts away because of their plight. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. All their wisdom has come to nothing. <coughs> then they cry to the Lord and in their trouble, and, in, and he brings them out of their distresses. He hushes the storm to a calm and to a gentle whisper so that the waves of the sea are still. Then the men are glad because of the calm, and he brings them to their desired haven. Oh, that men would praise and confess to the Lord for his goodness and loving kindness and his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the company of the elders. Amen. I'm going to end there. Oh, that men would praise and confess to the Lord for his goodness and loving kindness and his wonderful works to the children of men. Okay, I'm just going to end right there. That's my exhortation to you this morning. Oh, that you would. Okay, amen. Please come on up this morning and just remember, please let us know your name. Honor and glorify the, our risen Savior, Jesus. We want to know where you were, what God did, where you are today what he's done on your behalf, the wonderful works that he's done. Remember, there's other people, and we're gonna, we'll continue going until we're done here, uh, or until the Lord, said, and the Lord might say we're done, because we can do testimonies just continually. Um, we end at a quarter till, so if I stop you at some point, and it, that's, it's nothing personal, please project. Uh, we're, at, we're not in drama season anymore. But if you imagine talking to Paul at the back there, I want him to hear me. Okay? All right? My name is Lewis Fred Bevins, Jr., and um, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ and a child of the Most High God. Um, my story is super long. We got to a quarter tell, right? Um, um, funny, the last time I did this, actually, it took an hour and a half, so um, I'll try to shorten it down. Um, I was born in California, and uh, really, really early, my life has just been just been a wreck. Um, I was born, I was, I was raised in Whittier, and uh, did pretty good throughout high school, and um, I graduated high school at a really, well, I graduated high school really. Um, I was I was told I could either be expelled or graduate early, and uh, had some problems there. And then about two months out of high school, like I said, I graduated with a almost perfect grade point average. Um, was for some reason God, you know, gave me a brain. And uh, about two months out of high school, they uh, they came and they uh, got me and they said I was uh, got a warrant for uh, attempted murder, kidnapping, burglary, and a couple other things, and uh, went to prison. Uh, made it through prison without even touching a drug. Um, my mom was, you know, she lived in Northern California. If you guys know anything about that, it's the Emerald Triangle. You know, I never, never once wanted to do drugs. I hated drugs. Um, I was out of prison for about 35 minutes when my best friend who picked me up, uh, she asked me to talk to her cousin because he was doing meth and uh, she knew I hated drugs. And I went to talk to him and uh, he said, you can't knock it till you try it. And uh, I think I was, like I said, I was about 
I was 19 and a half, almost 20, and uh, I'm 45 now, and uh, I've been clean for going on 35 days, maybe. Um, so you, that whole knock, you can't knock it till you try it thing. That's garbage. Um, you, you know, some things you just stay away from. Um, anyways, uh, went through uh, went through some things. Um, ended up in South Dakota somehow, and uh, did pretty good there. But you know, I once got back into the meth game and uh, ended up going back to prison for five years. And uh, I'd already clicked up in California with a with a with a gang, with a prison gang, and I got involved in, in South Dakota there too. And uh, after about 18 months in ADSEG, um, I got out and of ADSEG and back, sent back to general population. And uh, there's this guy that I had just idolized. He was his arms were this big, and uh, he had I hate so and so all over him, and just looked like a mean, terrible guy who I wanted to be friends with. And uh, I uh, he I ended up getting a job in the welding shop there, and um, he came up to me one day and he asked me if I wanted to go to church with him. And uh, I was all for it because in prison, if you know anything about prison, church is where work gets done. I mean, you see people from other units, you see, um, you know, you can get to people. And so I thought for sure I was being recruited into something else. And uh, as soon as, and you guys forgive me because I cry a lot. Um, but as soon as we got into church, he fell down flat on his face and he started praying and thanking God. And he, and he grabbed me, and I was a big dude, and he pulled me straight down, and he looked at me, because I've been praying for you for about two years now, and uh, something happened, and, I, and it changed me, and it, and it took the violence right out of me, it took, it gave me these stupid tears, um, and uh, in prison, our uh, our chaplain was a, was a woman, and uh, I obviously, we don't here at our church have a problem with, with that. Um, she, she pulled me aside and she said, you know, God died for those. And those are, those are a gift. And I looked at her and I said, you could, you could give me something else. You know, I'm in prison. I don't want to be crying all the time. Um, and so, anyway, I, I uh, did the rest of my time. I, I got grace from, uh, from the, my, my people in there to walk away. Um, that doesn't really happen very often. And uh, I got out and did really well. Um, I did really well until I met, everybody's story starts, you know, until I met a girl. And uh, <laughs> it wasn't her fault. But um, we fell and uh, ended up losing that family over, over drugs and um, moved back to California, came back up here to go through this program that I'd heard about over in Coeur d'Alene called uh, The Ranch, The Good Samaritan Ranch. And uh, I went through that and fell in love with Jesus again. And um, through that, I have a little boy that I don't ever talk about over in Newport. And uh, at my grad, ah, doggone it! At my graduation, uh, I just remember thinking, man, I just be so, God be so great if He showed up. And I just remember sitting up here like this and looking down the aisle and he come running down. And uh, I don't know why, but I blew it again months after that, you know, met this other girl. And uh, we, uh, it was it was amazing because I met this girl, and they tell you the one thing you don't do is you don't hook up with a girl you meet in rehab. And, uh, and I did. Um, she was not even close to the girl I wanted to, to, to be with. And uh, I remember passing like this one day. And I, I distinctly heard a voice say, it's her. And I looked up and I'm like, no, because I'm annoying and she's annoying. Um, I'm loud, she's loud. Um, it just, it just, it would, I just didn't see how it was gonna work because the two of us, I figured we were gonna hurt each other. And uh, it was so bad, so cute almost, that the pastor, my pastor Tim would sit up at the, at the pulpit and he'd, he, when he would say Louie and Alora, he'd say Louie and Alora because we were so cute, you know. And uh, she would literally, she'd, she'd jump up and down and clap when I walked into a room every single time. And it was really, it was, it was so cute, it was disgusting. Um, 
we uh we dated for too long and uh just went right back to our filth and a letter back to the pit <coughs> this story has a lot of ups and downs my my pastor says that i am the what did he say the, the holy ghost roller coaster um that's what he says the trip i'm on and uh so that's a lot of ups and downs but we uh she ended up going back to the program and and I just thought, you know, from that day on, if she's going to go do that, i got to do right. And so while she was in the program, the girls' program over there is a four-month program plus, you know, six-month aftercare, so almost a year. And uh, at her graduation, I, I got up on stage and asked her to marry me. And uh, she looked at me and said, of course, stupid. And uh, we did really good. I wouldn't even kiss her. Um, it was, I think, from... October to March of that the next year, I wouldn't even kiss her, and uh, I just wanted it to be right. I'd already lost one family. Um, when I met my wife, she had this little baby, and uh, she'd come walking around the corner, crawling around the corner, and uh, looked up at me, and, and my wife said, uh, she doesn't like men, especially with beards, and I had a big old beard. And I just, I kind of smiled, and my daughter, she looked up at me and she put her arms up. And uh, from that minute on, she was, she was mine. Um, anyways, we, uh, I remember we, my, we got married, and everything was beautiful, the most beautiful wedding you could ever imagine. Um, <coughs> everything was great, super, super great. Um, we were both following the Lord. Um, I've given, I've been able, I've been privileged enough to give the, the message at our church a number of times. Um, God really, he, he did a work in my life. I remember we were doing this thing and I never, I didn't believe in prophecy. I didn't, I thought prophecy was fake and I thought that there were charlatans and there were just people that just, you know, wanted attention. And I remember sitting at a service one day and this, this guy was preaching and he looked over at um, this guy, Stephen, and he said, you're going to be a pastor. And everybody knew that knew Stephen knew he was going to be a pastor. And I was like, whatever. And then he goes like this, and you, and he points right at me, and he goes, and you, God's waiting for you to shed that clown mask and become the teacher you were called to be. And that's been my dream my whole life, was to be a teacher. And uh, then I was sold. I sold so much that two weeks later, I was back in a meth pipe. I say that sarcastically because my faith has always been real sur surface-like. And I remember going to my, getting home a couple couple weeks later, my, I hid it from her for a minute, and my wife, she she wanted to try it, and she's like, you know, well, if you're going to do it, I'm going to do it. And I, was, I said, uh, all right, and she just looked at me, and she goes, but I don't have another one left in me. And I looked at her, and I said, you know, what does that mean? She says, we're going to do this, we're going to do it. And, I said, well, giddy up, let's go. And uh, she wasn't kidding. She, uh, I watched the most, the most wonderful woman I ever met turn into the most wretched, disgusting thing I've ever seen. Um, I talk about my children, and uh, two of them, we're still trying to figure out of her mind. Um, and I don't say this to, to, to you know, to, for the poor me's because if you guys hear me, I've got three kids. And that's praise God. I got three kids, you guys. I was told I would never have kids, and I would pray all the time, Lord, please, I want kids. And it could turn out that all three of these kids are not even are not mine biologically. But I've got three kids. And that's my testimony, I guess, is that I stand here broken, I stand here wrecked, and I stand here crying all the time, but God's given me the answers to my dreams. God's given me, He's given me so much. There's, there's a verse that's my life verse, and, and it's Acts 3.19. It says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, and times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. I remember pulling my, my my first son out of my out of my wife's belly and 
that to me was the refreshing of the Lord, the presence of the Lord. I got a long way to go, and I know there's a lot more happiness coming, and I know I'm in the middle of this, but uh, I know that God, God took so much from me that was going to kill me. Who I was, it was going to kill me. What I was doing was going to kill me. This is giving me life. This is giving me an opportunity to, uh, that's my daughter, um, to show that when things go wrong for her, who to turn to. And I want to be that man that, I want my daughter to see that this is real. I want my daughter to see that this isn't just some game that we're playing, that this is not something that I go to to get better because I'm messed up. I want my daughter to see that this is life. And and I don't I don't I'm all mixed up right now because when I talk about my my daughter, I messed this kid up, you guys. I'm responsible for the fact that what she thinks and what she you know and I just it's all right. Yeah. It's all right. Hey, it's all right, brother. It's all right. You know what? You're here on purpose, with a purpose, yeah. for, for a purpose, purpose. purpose brother. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Strive yeah. to enter his rest. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I have no peace. Strive to enter his rest, brother. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Please um, pray for her. We will. Okay? Yes. All right. <clears throat> thank you, brother. Yep. You know, I thank you for your boldness and your courage to come up. Told you I'm going to it's all right. I understand. I do. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to use his testimony as an example. This is not, uh, it's something I missed when in my introduction. Um, some of us, all of us, have uh, checkered pasts, and we have lots of failures, lots of mistakes, lots of adversity, lots of testimonies. And... Um, just remember that God has wants you to speak those out. But because of time, you know, the every detail isn't always necessary, you know. So just be selective, be led by the Spirit. And I'm not saying that he wasn't. I'm just saying be courteous of the, the person after you, okay? All right. Thank you. Uh, my name is Shirley Ann. Um, I want to give God glory for all he's done for me. Um, I just got reborn in December, and God has done so much for me. I'm free from condemnation. I'm free from addictions. I'm free from shame and guilt. I'm free from the fear of dying. I'm free from mental and spiritual torment. I'm free from painful childhood traumas. I'm free from self-hatred. I'm free from fear of man. I'm free from depression. I'm free from anxiety, fear, and worry. And I'm free from really horrible nightmares. And I'm free because Jesus Christ found me at my lowest point. He gave me a new heart and a new spirit. He gave me eternal life. He filled me with his love, his hope, his joy. He gave me purpose when before I felt so useless as a human being. He's also healing the deepest parts of my heart and soul and restoring my relationships with my family. Best of all, I'm getting to know Jesus personally, not just about him, but a true, intimate relationship. He's restored my childlike spirit, and I'm so thankful. Amen. Thank you, God. I love you. John 17, 3. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ in whom you have sent. So, my name is Austin, and I'm from Wenatchee, Washington. Uh, I've been through a lot. A lot of drugs, a lot of heartache. And my biggest thing is just my emotions. They always get the best of me. I've always ran from everything. I've never committed to anything. And this is the first time that I'm committing to something that I can't walk away from. Oh, 
know how you guys do this, but <laughs> I just, uh, my name's Javier. I just want to give glory to God that I'm still here. Uh, you know, I came through here 10 years ago, and this place literally saved my life. Uh, everything I was involved in um, was just, yeah. I won't get into detail. I'm just going to say there, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of alcohol, a lot of violence, a lot of uh, incarceration, and I'm here now. And I wasn't going to get up here. I know we always say that, but I really wasn't going to get up here. <laughs> but there's a brother in here right now that I haven't seen in a long time, and I just want to tell you, man, I love you, brother. And the Lord has something for us. It doesn't have to be everything we know. That said, thank you. Good morning. My name is Trevon. Um, just wanted to give a testimony. Uh, just felt like it's where the credit is due to the Lord, uh, just for what He's done in my life. You know, I could talk about the things that I used to do, but I think most of you in here have already heard that story. So, I just want to just say what the Lord is doing for me right now. Um, just giving me peace. Uh, just giving me a solid ground to stand on. Just uh, learning to trust the Lord and all those things. You know. Uh, in one testimony, I told y'all that I never knew what stability was. I never had it when I was growing up. Um, but in this season that I'm in, you know, I, I came to get away and to not rely on mom. Mommy's gone, you know what I mean? That's how I have to live my life now. Uh, so it's just a new thing for me, you know, working and actually being able to have money in my pocket without messing it all off or, you know, paying, being responsible, paying little bills here and there, whether it's your phone bill or, you know, coming out of pocket for $400 a month. You know what I mean? That's all new to me. I don't, I'm not used to it. I look at it and I'm like, Lord, help me because I don't know about that. You know, I'm not used to that, you know, man. But it's this, you know, just the transformation that you can see, you know, I look in the mirror these days and, you know, I'm proud, you know, just of the man that God is molding me into because I'm not doing it. This ain't me. I, I can promise you that. That's not me. Um, just where God has taken me from and just seeing the goodness and the faithfulness of God is just amazing. And at times it's a little overwhelming because just to know that he loves me that much, that he would not only die for y'all on a cross, but he died for me, uh, the sinful man that I was. Um, <clears throat> and just like Javi said, you know, seeing seeing his brother here because all three of us are from Moses Lake and the Moses Lake boys are coming up. I'm saying we have something, you know, God's, God's doing good things for us. And uh, I pray over that city, that town a lot because I want to see a, a lot more people come to know Jesus um, because where I was in my life, people didn't expect me to get out of that gutter that I was in. And, you know, it wasn't me who made a way. It was God who made a way for me, you know, um, and I'm just blessed because I get to, you know, it's a different feeling sitting in the back of that room and I get to look at the back of y'all's head and y'all doing your thing and it's just like, all right, cool. But it's just a different perspective and God is good and, you know, it's just like a, you get to see like those different levels that you go to, you know, because the Lord gives you the grace and the strength just to make it. And anyone in here, uh, you know, I'm not a motivational speaker or anything like that. I'm not trying to paint that picture, but I know how it feels to sit in those chairs and how it feels to not accomplish that, th especially the first couple times around. I didn't make it the first couple of times, but y'all don't have to have that same story. You can make the change, and this, the, you can make that up in your mind right now and decide, like, you want this. You know, you want this. You can change. Um, God has good things for you, and I encourage you not to walk away from it because that's the best gold you're ever going to have in life. So... God is good, and just thank y'all for being brothers and sisters in Christ, and I love you very much. Everybody, I'm Derek. Um, just to prove that God just doesn't bring people from Washington to the Spokane Dream Center, I'm from Montana. <laughs> so I want to I want to prove the validity of Psalm 107 there you go. Thank you. Uh, and God's mercy and grace. And I love that psalm so much. Um, and uh, I just really 
struggling over what I want to mention now. Um, Trevon, I think you were the last one to graduate. I'm right behind you in a little over a month, but i um, very excited. It's not the first time uh, that I've completed this program, but I'm grateful uh, for God's forgiveness and his mercy to bring me back and really open my eyes through forgiveness, through the love of Christ that is displayed. Uh, and it's all Jesus that works through this place. And uh, I just want to... I just want to praise him for his forgiveness, for his, his willingness and his, his faithfulness to finish what he starts. Uh, and he's done it in an amazing way, and he's done it through the forgiveness of other people uh, that genuinely love me. And that's how I've come to know that, that he is real, because I've struggled uh, with acceptance and with really accepting love from other people, uh, so much so that it just caused me to run over and over and over again when uh, sometimes things get good. Johnny talks about the fear of man, the fear of success, and the fear of failure a lot, and I identify with that in a big way. Uh, but anyways, through uh, the forgiveness of, you know, people here and uh, people that I love and know and have really hurt, uh, their forgiveness has really opened my eyes to the love of Christ. And uh, I've, I've received that a lot this year. And uh, at the end of Psalm 107, it talks about he brings us into a family uh, that's like a flock. And uh, I really stared at that a minute ago. And and have received it, you know, so I just, for those of us that are runners, for those of us that really struggle to uh, love and be loved, uh, just pray that we would embrace the love of people that genuinely know Jesus, like Pastor Dave and Pastor Alice and Pastor Vince and all the leadership here, uh, not to, to elevate them above the Lord, they're just, it's, the Lord is working through them to love us, uh, those of us that are uh, prone to wander, but uh that's just God's faithfulness in my life. And like this man over here that it says, you know, in a short, I, I want to commit and I've never finished anything. And I join you in that, you know, to, to, to genuinely commit to follow Jesus because um, he's done so much for us. So I just want to stand and, and, you know, profess his forgiveness and love and, and, and make that proclamation that I want to be the one that stands and the one that will mention the fact that uh, I'm redeemed by him. So. Love you guys. Thank you. Hey, my name's CJ. I just want to thank God. Um, so back in February, my youngest was born. And uh, that day, uh, there were some complications with my wife. There were some complications with Annie. And uh, God just protected them and uh, everything went from looking scary to just being fine kind of over the course of 12 or 16 hours and so I um, thank him for that and then I also thank him because uh, um, he provided me the opportunity to take paid time off um, from work so I've been able to be home with uh, the family and we'll work through and so. My name is Eric, and uh, I just want to thank the Lord for setting me free from my bondage and uh, continuing to work on me and show me grace and uh, allow me to come see my brothers and sisters of the Spokane Dream Center. It's a, it's a treat. It's going to be my highlight of my month. Thank you, guys. Hello, I'm Brianna. Um, so Josh, as you had mentioned, just this everyday thing, it just kind of brought to remembrance yesterday. Um, so as I was getting up in the morning, I knew I was going to go out and do some gardening and plant some <laughs> vegetables. And I was like, okay, Holy Spirit, you know, just help me out. I don't really know what I'm doing. But um, you were there, you know, when, when you caused the vegetation to grow, you know, at creation. And so as I was out there and I was just doing my little thing and I'm getting these seeds in the ground. I get to these radish seeds, and they're so tiny, you know, and I'm like, oh, Lord, you know, should I put more than one seed in the ground? Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit was like, you know, a mustard seed. And, and I just began to cry because I thought about just faith, the faith that God gives us. And it, 
and it can be so small, but it can move mountains, and it can bring us upon this journey that changes our life and teaches us just to trust in God and allow Him to make the changes that, that we can't and set us free where we were so bound and, you know, had no way out, and it was just so beautiful, just in the ordinary things of life when you invite the Holy Spirit and say, walk with me, help me, I need you. You know, He's there just to share in something that I just enjoy personally, but it meant so much more and showed me so much more through that. And, and I have faith that that little seed is going to make beautiful radishes. So <laughs> thank you. And I'm just grateful. Time for one more if somebody's just on the edge of their seat and I just beat you up here. Get on up. No? All right. Is anybody waiting for next week? You're waiting for next week? Okay. Thank you. I want to write it out. Though. All right. That's fine. That's great. It helps me because I'm going to prepare anyway. I'm ready to get back into Ephesians. But I'm ready to keep hearing these testimonies too. So, you know, if we need another week, I'm going to open it up. Please come and give your testimony. If anybody else wants to utilize next week, go ahead. But I'm also going to be ready to teach out of Ephesians if you're it. If you're, if you're it, then I'll be ready, okay? Heavenly Father, we are so very grateful, so thankful, Lord. I thank you for each and every individual who got up here and had the boldness and the courage, God, to profess and to proclaim that, Jesus, you are our deliverer, you are our savior, you are our all in all, God, and you have done mighty, wonderful works in my life. And, God, you who have begun a good work are faithful to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus, Lord, we just thank you, God, that you are committed to us. And, Father, I pray and encourage all in this room, including myself, first and foremost, to stay committed, to love you, to be in your presence, to seek your face, to be obedient to your will, to feed on your word, and to proclaim the good news to those around us. In Jesus' name, amen.